There are many ways of uh, uh, using the cannabinoids. They can be CB1 agonist, antagonist, uh, CB2 uh, uh, agonist, etc., etc. And there were also various other ways, CBD, and I spoke about CBD. Now let's go to um, the actions of CB1 uh, and uh, CB2. The first uh, topic I want to discuss is neuroprotection. As I again mentioned yesterday, we have the immune system. The immune system takes care of many of our needs for protection, but not all of them. And one of them is neuroprotection. And uh, we started working with Professor Esther Shohami. She's a, a pharmacologist, uh, works on brain trauma. And uh, uh, we tried to see whether the cannabinoids are involved in neuroprotection during uh, brain trauma. And the first thing we looked at was what happens to one of the endocannabinoids, the 2-AG, uh, in the brain when there, there is brain trauma. And we found that the levels of 2-AG went up 10 times. Uh, this is the right, the, the red one over there. After four hours, we had a lot of 2-AG there. It went down a bit later on, but it went on and on for 24 hours and uh, even a few hours later. Now, uh, we wanted to see whether uh, this is just because we have messed up the brain and the brain doesn't know what to do under the conditions of trauma. Uh, so we thought if it is a protective mechanism, then obviously if we um, administer exogenous 2-AG, which is relatively easy to synthesize, then let's see what happens. And indeed, we found that if we admi administer exogenous 2-AG, uh, we see uh, lowering of the edema during head trauma. There is a, a lot of uh, water uh, uh, in the brain, uh, more than we need. And also, there are, uh, uh, neuro the, uh, we looked at the neurological severity score, the way the poor animal moves around, does all kinds of things. I will not go into the technical details. Believe me, the neurological severity score is very important. And if we gave 2-AG, we saw that the neurological severity score is uh, much improved, uh, especially at a certain dosage. And again, as I mentioned yesterday, there is a, a biphasic effect with uh, uh, some of the endocannabinoids. At uh, 0.1 milligram, it doesn't act. Dose is too low. At 5 milligrams, it acts very well, improves the neurological severity score. But if we give 10 milligrams, the effect is lower. This is something we see in there. Many others have seen in many other situations. So one should take good care of what's happening, whether one does not, in a certain situation, give too much or too little. Now, we uh, went to our pathologists and asked them to see whether the infarct volume, the part of the brain that is damaged, Goes, the, um, uh, goes down when uh, we administer 2-AG, and indeed it went down by nearly 50%, and it was uh, uh, very significant. So we knew that, uh, obviously, under our conditions, we can improve the neurological severity score, we can improve the outcome of, uh, 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 of uh, brain damage. Now, if does it act through one of the uh, cannabinoid receptors? And the answer was yes. If we give an antagonist the relatively high doses, we can block the activity of 2-AG. The antagonist is CB1. So we were very happy with that and went ahead uh, uh, trying to see whether it has some, uh, whether it is important uh, in, without giving the drugs, what happens if an animal does not contain the CB1 receptor? Will it be more susceptible to damage? And the, the answer is yes again. Uh, if we take uh, mice that genetic, genetically uh, the CB1 receptor has been knocked out, we see that they do not respond to the 2-AG. Uh, so 
the CB1 receptor is a protective re uh, receptor, part of a protective mechanism. If we knock it out, then the uh, animal is much more susceptible to damage. Um, how does it, uh, uh, what about other things? During brain damage, for example, the blood-brain barrier is uh, also damaged and one gets uh, a lot of things from the blood into the brain. Now that's not uh, uh, um, something we would like to see because there's a, there are a lot of things in the blood that get, we can get rid of them, but the brain is uh, uh, too delicate, so there is a blood-brain barrier. And uh, it's relatively easy to see that. We can inject a dye, and if the blood-brain barrier is okay, then the dye does not go into the brain. But uh, if uh, uh, the blood-brain barrier is damaged, then uh, quite a lot of the dye goes into the brain, and we can see that. Well, if we give 2-AG, as we did, uh, then uh, uh, the blood-brain barrier uh, is stabilized to a large extent, and much less dye goes into the brain. So here we have a very important central mechanism for uh, 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 guarding the brain. And I, there is no drug today that helps us, and I sincerely hope that uh, uh, we shall uh, at one point be able to introduce a drug in that respect. Now, what does 2-AG do in addition to that? For example, it inhibits the TNF-alpha after CHI is a closed head injury. It inhibits the tumor necrosis factor, which is a pro-inflammatory cytokine. It also does that with other uh, cytokines, uh, uh, IL-1 beta expression. Again, it, um, dam it uh, lowers the expression of uh, this pro-inflammatory cytokine. Let's see if I, okay. Now, uh, there are a lot of other details. I don't want to go into them. Just uh, one point. There is, uh, we actually went into the clinic with, with a derivative and it passed um, a stage one clinical trials in brain damage and stage two and went into stage three. We had uh, uh, people coming from traffic that had uh, undergone traffic accidents, they had uh, brain injury. And at the last moment, and I'm not sure why this happened, we, were almost, we had almost finished and the company had spent a huge amount of money. And at the last moment, the trial failed and there are all kinds of uh, uh, discussions why that happened at the last moment after we had done with hundreds and hundreds of patients and the results were positive. I think that at some point we shall try to uh, find out exactly what happened and go back and uh, continue the results. Now, brain injury goes through two major mechanisms. One of them is uh, uh, enhancing the, the effects of glutamate, cytokines, reactive oxygen intermediates, ROS, and this causes neuronal and glial cell death. But there is also a second pathway, uh, and it has to do with vasoconstriction. And uh, 2-AG, uh, we showed, uh, affects the uh, left-hand side, uh, the glutamate, cytokines, reactive oxygen intermediate. What about va vasoconstriction? Does it do anything uh, uh, in the vasoconstriction? Or thromboxane, which causes cerebral ischemia and so on. So we went ahead trying to find out whether the endocannabinoid system is involved in vasoconstriction, it can relieve the vasoconstriction. And uh, uh, the answer basically is yes. Now, it does not, the brain does not do that apparently only through 2-AG. It has additional compounds which do that, apparently, uh, things that are very important in physiology, our body tries to have several mechanisms. If one goes wrong, then another one will take over. And our body, uh, as in principle, is stingy. We don't want to spend energy if we can possibly avoid that. 
For example, steroids. This is a steroid molecule. The body spends a lot of uh, energy building a steroid molecule. And once it has a steroid molecule, by putting small uh, elements, additional uh, parts of the molecule on this molecule, it gets a lot of very active molecules which do not necessarily have to do anything. Uh, there is nothing except chemical relationship between them. For example, if we change over there, we get our androgen and estrogens. And if we change, if we put uh, uh, something at the 11 position, we get corticosteroids. And if we get something over there, we get aldosterone. And if we get uh, on that position, we get progesterone corticosteroids. So the, our body is stingy. It tries to use a, whatever it has for uh, a, as many uh, situations as possible. So we thought maybe this is what's going on with cannabinoids as well. Uh, for example, we knew that anandamide, the molecule on the top, uh, is formed from a molecule which, which is caused, uh, uh, which the name is there, the structure is there, but and this is found in membranes, but also there is another compound which is present there, and the difference between the two is just one carboxyl group. Uh, and uh, the one on the left side is called phosphatidyl ethanolamine, and the one on the bottom is phosphatidyl serine. They differ only one carboxyl group. So, on the principle of stinginess, is it possible that the body does exactly the same? It produces an andamide, and as everything there is the same, it will also produce the molecule down there, arachidonoyl serine. So we thought chances are that being stingy, our body will take the membranes and as, uh, while making an andamide, it will also make the other compound which may be useful for a variety of, uh, uh, of, of, in a variety of physiological processes. And so here we have an andamide on the left hand side up there, a 2-AG and arachidonoyl serine which differs from an andamide just with a car by a carboxyl group. So we looked for it, and yes, it is present in the brain, it's present in the periphery, it can be synthesized, so we took the, the RAS, we call it, arachidonoyl serine, we took the RAS and looked what uh, this molecule does, and uh, surprisingly, it does not bind to the receptors, neither to the CB1 nor to the CB2, but it protects the brain just as 2-AG does. So here we have another example of two different ways that our body tries to lower damage. One of them is through uh, the cannabinoid receptors. Another way is through this particular, with this particular compound, we are uh, looking together with uh, uh, Hetta Bradshaw is Hetta around here, and uh, she just told me yesterday that she has seen, she knows how RAS works, at least in part, at least to another receptor, and so we are very happy, and uh, Hetta is probably going to push it uh, further on. May I have the next slide, please? So here we have a good example how our body acts to the cannabinoid receptors, but also through molecules that are very closely related, cannabinoid-like molecules that do not bind to the receptors, but act as protective mechanisms. Now, what about actions to the CB2 receptor? Uh, I have a, a student, she's completing her PhD uh, thesis, and uh, she looked at molecules which are a little bit strange, one of them is derived from pinene, a very well-known material in, uh, in uh, 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 that's a natural product, and another one which is derived from camphor, also a very well-known product, and we synthesized derivatives which uh, had previously been available in my lab, and we found that these two compounds act specifically on the CB2 receptor. The natural products, an andamide of 2-AG, act both on CB1 and CB2. If we want to look at CB of only one of them, we prefer to have 
specific compounds. And these compounds are uh, uh, specific for the CB2 receptor. And I will not go to the synthesis. It's a little bit complicated, and that's what a PhD thesis is for. She's been working uh, for two, two years trying to find out how to do all these things. But ultimately, we found ways to synthesize these compounds. And the only diff uh, thing which I would like to point out is uh, can, uh, they are the same compounds here, but one is an alcohol and the other is an acid. And uh, we looked at uh, their activity of the CB1 and CB2 receptors, and we found that the compound called 308 and the compound called 910 are very good, uh, they bind very well to the CB2 receptor. They do not bind to the CB1 receptor. So here we have materials that can be explored for the specific activity on CB2. Uh, some of the other compounds, 914, which is the acid, does not bind well to either of the receptors. And yet, when we looked at what's happening, we saw that uh, the compound that binds specifically to the CB2 receptor is an excellent protector against uh, closed head injury, as we had seen with the natural compounds and we had seen with RAS. So the natural compound, 2AG, acts through the CB1 receptor and protects our brain. This compound, which is a specific CB2 agonist, acts through the CB2 agonist and protects our brain. And RAS, which does not bind to either of these, also does that. So our brain, our body, is conditioned to uh, protect, or at least lower the damage of something so very important, brain damage. So chances are, I'm almost sure that one of these compounds, or related compounds, will become drugs uh, that will protect us against neurological damage or certainly against brain damage. There is nothing today. If somebody is in a traffic accident and gets uh, uh, serious brain damage, there is very little we can do about it.